couldn't have the title Blown Away by Imagination if we didn't live out a few childhood fantasies every once in a while. For me, that means Knight Rider. I'm obsessed with the show, obsessed with the car. I've wanted it since I was six and I saw my first Trans Am in a 7-Eleven parking lot with a bright yellow paint job and a red screaming chicken on the front. By the time I was 15, before I even had a license, I had my first Trans Am. And now I'm my third and I can start to really customize this thing. We gotta do the one thing the kit is known for next to Turbo Boost, the scanner light. First thing we gotta do is we gotta set up the engine bay to house the light. Now the light is right there, um, but I gotta make a encasement for it. Because of the fact that Kit's engine compartment is super top secret, we gotta make it look fancy and high tech, and that means making plastic covers that really go over the engine to make it look futuristic and stuff. I wanna fill in the, the spot in here with fiberglass, and I wanna make it a flat piece. I'm also gonna put in a uh, hood holder uh, using this aluminum rod here because it matches the engine. Um, and it's gonna hold up my Ram Air hood. That's a custom story all in itself. I'm not even gonna go there. I put a bunch of blocks in here. What these blocks do is give me a spacer. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a bunch of clay in here to build up the shape. Then I can cover that with fiberglass, pin the light in here, and then we can cut away the nose and we'll talk about that later. But for right now, step one, get the light in place. So, see the blocks? In a few seconds, um, well, few hours will have gone by but in a few seconds for you you'll see the clay result because we bought a bunch of these clay blocks like this um, eight bucks Canadian at the wholesale art supply store I'm just gonna rip off a chunk slap it on so you can already see how I got it started here um, I got a whole bunch of stuff splattered along here I'm gonna keep on working my way down and then once I've got the shape that I want, then I'll start skimming layers off, smoothing it out, wetting it down. You'll also notice how I put plastic wrap on the bottom. That is to control the moisture. This is going to take a few days, hopefully not. But if that's the case, I need to make sure I keep it wet. At night, um, I would soak it and then cover it with plastic. And it's as if it was pretty much staying fresh and new um, all project long. Once we're done, we'll rip it off, put it back into a ball store it for pff, like a year. This is just air dry clay. It works totally fine. You don't need to kill and dry and stuff. In fact, it's better that way because a little bit of water will keep its life going for years. Well, it's three days later. I'm covered in clay and we finally got ourselves a shape. You see, I've got holes that I put in there. Those holes, you got to think of reverse filling here. I'm going to fill them with fiberglass and then they'll become little legs that this will stand on so that if I ever wanted to put my knee on it or something like that, you know, go over there, it would uh, hold it up. The shape that I took, a little bit interesting process there. What I used is right here. It's called a drawing snake. It's used in architectural design. It curves and it takes shapes. This part here is going to be used over here for the cutout of the scanner. And this part here is what carries on the line right here. I took about four packages of clay so um, we'll cover it with fiberglass next, smooth it out, sand it out, paint it up. Time for my favorite part of this whole project, fiberglass. What we got to do first is fill in the uh, holes here that we're going to be using for uh, legs with some strips. So I took some fiberglass mesh. Uh, there's different types of cloth. This is what they call roving. You can also see the stuff that you use for boat cloth. That's just cloth basically and there's a really thin stuff too it looks like onion skin it's called onion skin um, the idea is you'd make a sandwich effect so you'd build a bunch of roving and then you'd put the boat cloth and then you'd put the um, onion skin on top to make it super super smooth that's if you were doing really high-end stuff what we're gonna be doing is pretty simple so I can just lay down the roving that's enough it's gonna look very chippy as you can see but I'm gonna put enough resin on it that um, it'll form like a glass look I'm gonna take this cutout piece I'm gonna jam it in the hole just like that and then you see it's sticking up a little bit right there that's okay because when I wet it it'll lay down flat so I'll do that here as well I'm going to take um, a sheet of it and I'm just going to cut what I've got where I've got folds and anything messed up with it and I'll just lay it down to shape okay now we know that we've got enough, so once we put the resin, we know it'll work fine. Once you get it mixed, you've only got a few minutes to work with it, so it's really important that we have this prep work done. Got the polyester resin. 
which, if you can believe it, you can get at Walmart cheaper than anywhere. Um, it's not the best fiberglass resin. It's a polyester, which means it's constantly getting harder and harder and harder and harder over time goes by. There's another resin you can get uh, that's used commercially, and it comes in a big bucket with uh, warnings and stuff all over it. Once that's laid, it is hard. Uh, I'd recommend that if you're doing serious body work. Again, this is a pretty small panel, and I've never really had any problems with this as long as you mix it properly. Having said that, the lid that comes with it is what I use as the mixing tray. All that I do, by the way, wear gloves. This is going to be a mess. Dump the resin in. Get it just about full. Then you'll take the hardener, put in 1, 17, 18, 18, 19, 20 drops. Now I got a scraper. I use that because I can grind off um, the fiberglass if it hardens on. Mix it really good. This ratio works good for me because there's not a lot of fiberglass, so you're not going to have a lot of waste. And 20 drops gives you about 20 minutes of working time. It is not a drop to time ratio, so if that's what you're thinking, I'm going to stop you right now. Average fiberglass is between 12 and 20 minutes of working time. And also, temperature has got to be over 20 degrees. Do not attempt to do this at 15, or you're going to have to bring out heat guns, and it's just going to be a mess. It might work, it might not. First thing I'm going to do is those little pieces. Take some, dump it on. Wet the cloth really good. Cloth has absolutely no strength at all. That's why you gotta take care to build a proper form. So if you give it a good shape, it'll come out looking like a million bucks. If you don't, well, we don't talk about those projects. It's all wet in there now. That's what we want. See how it got wet and it laid down. Now, I said I was gonna soak it so that it looks glossy. I didn't do that with this because I don't need to. I just need it to be hard. That's good enough. When I lay down the full panels, um, there will be more glossy. So I'm going to finish off the rest of these, and I'll let you know how the rest goes. Glass is spread on the legs. Now I can put it on the big panel. Very simple. Give it a dump. Then spread it around. As it soaks in, the roving will just absorb the resin and it'll turn to the easiest moldable material you've ever seen. Look at how smooth that is. Taking the shape perfectly. Now here's another reason why you want to wear gloves. See on my curve here, it's not quite in there. So I gotta tuck it in a little bit. So I'm gonna work it like that to get the shape. Then I'm gonna smooth it like that. Perfect, I love fiberglass. Okay, that's how it is. I'm going to keep pouring and spreading and remixing. And I'll show you the finished product in a few minutes. Great news. It looks exactly as it should. Once the glass resin and hardener start to mix together, the fiberglass starts to turn like a yellowy brown. That's how you know that it's curing. I was able to push and pull on the fibers of the roving. Um, and then make it come in like if you could in case you're noticing how did he get that edge right there so clean I didn't it was actually um, Kind of overlapping I wet it and I worked it in and I pulled it and moved it and all sorts of stuff and mushed it around And as it was wet like I said, it'll pretty much take any shape right now. It looks wet Well, it did look wet now. It's starting to look a little bit glazed the glazed look is exactly what you want That means that it's drying so we're not gonna touch it. We're not gonna do anything to it After that we can pop it off. We can sand it smooth. We can fill it and we can paint it. Now, one other thing that we're gonna do, this layer here, this is just a thin, thin layer. Once I've got it done, before I do all that fancy filling and sanding and all that kind of stuff, I'm gonna take it out, I'm gonna flip it over, and I'm gonna put another layer of roving inside, so I'm gonna actually build up the thickness of it. Um, that'll make it stronger, double layer. Usually you want about, well, take a look at this hood. This is fiberglass, and it's almost a quarter of an inch thick. That's just to show how crazy you can get with these panels. Something like this, maybe two, maybe three layers, and you'd be really, really strong. So um, I'll leave that up to your discretion as how far you'd wanna go with your Knight Rider nose. Well, it's the evening after, and the fiberglass didn't quite dry as solidly as I expected. So what I did was took good old thousand watt halogens, 
shot it onto the fiberglass, used that as kind of like a heat lamp, let it sit overnight, and it dried pretty much solid. So we're good. Now the moment of truth. Just peel back the plastic like this, then we can just wiggle our fingers under and get the lift. As you see, it's already starting to pop off. It's gonna be a bit of a mess because there's some clay underneath of here. Gotta be careful here because it's it's tucked into that corner so it wants to crack and pop off. Plus here I think it kind of connected itself on. It slots in beautifully. Be really careful over here in this corner. Gotta get that out. Perfect. And Yeshiza! We've got a complete piece. So Here's our mess underneath of here. We can clean that up now, rip out all this clay, and basically uh, see what happened here. It looks like my legs didn't hold up at all. They're a, they're a limp noodle where there should be fiberglass, but that's okay because I can reinforce those no problem. It's been a few hours of work since the last video. What I can tell you is obviously we've got it shaped now, starting to smooth out. First thing I did was um, I had a bunch of fiberglass that was over the edges and I didn't really know where to start. So I took the Dremel here, put a grinding head on it, and just went to town basically. Just went all the way down and up, got the shape, conformed it around to there. Now you can see it fits in that little slot there beautifully. Um, the hooks there fit in perfectly too. Um, and then after that, it was a case of using the this Black & Decker Matrix, which is freaking amazing. It interchanges heads, so it's cordless, it's a drill, it's a saw, it's everything. That worked really nice. Once I got the, the shape with the Dremel, it ran a little bit straighter, because with the Dremel, it starts to wobble a little bit as you get into it. That straightened it out. Then to completely straighten it out, I used this big beast here, belt sander, and... I was able to just make straight line passes all the way through. I had a bit of an issue here where this part, for some reason, um, was sitting high. It was constantly lifting. It wasn't laying down smooth like this one here. Took the Dremel again. I cut a line right here. You can kind of see it because the fiberglass just finished drying. And with that done, I was able to bend that part down. I then put this bracket in here. I just pinned it under the, the nose, popped a screw into it to uh, hold it in place. Then with it pinned, I can lay on the new fiberglass. It's now exactly where I want. It's sitting just below the light and when the door closes, it'll pin down beautifully. Um, I also took the time to just make, um, clean up the line here a little bit. I screwed up a little bit on that. I took the orbital sander here and um, hit it with the, I used 80 grit, but you could go even lower like uh, 60 or even 36 and I just, um, smoothed out the fiberglass. It's obviously still very rough. There's pits and divots everywhere. Um, this was just to get at least kind of a smooth, consistent surface so that when I put the filler on, it'll lay smooth. Time to put a topper coat on the panel to smooth things out. I got some filler started here and all I did was I just came across with it nice and smooth to uh, basically fill in the low the low spots, um, you can still see there's still a few holes and stuff like there. Some of that's high spots like that, some of it's still a little bit low like that. Here's how you do it. You get yourself some body filler. You get yourself the catalyst, hardener. You slap it on, spread it like peanut butter. I use the smaller spreader to dig it out, spread it on. Then I'm going to use the bigger mixer here to mix it together and apply it. You're going to take Squeeze that, get to about there. It's not about amounts, it's about color and consistency. So as I mix it, it's going to turn really, really red. That we don't want, that's too red. That's going to dry in about <laughs> like five minutes. So we'll get some more filler here, slap it on. I'm going to mix it up real good, mix it around at the point, and then spread it that way, spread it that way, flip it over, and around you go. Okay, once you got that, load up your spreader. I got a, a low spot right here, so I'm just going to spread it on. So it's okay if the filler comes out a bit higher. Um, it's formulated in a certain way so that you can sand it. So be liberal with it. That's coming out like a mess. That means I need more filler. Okay. 
I should probably be using a thick, uh, sorry, a wider spreader for this, but whatever, it's no big deal. I know I'm gonna need a few coats. And that's it, just keep on going. You're gonna fill, sand, fill, sand. At this point, we're shaping still, so don't worry about fine finishing, worrying if you get scratch marks and stuff like that. That's a concern for uh, a later phase. Because we have the fit going on over there, we can bring the panel over here and start actually working on the real fine finishing. Um, for that, normally you'd block sand, but block sanding pretty much um, turns me into a person who swears a lot, so um, I prefer good tools. And for that, I cannot recommend enough the Milwaukee Orbital Sander. I had a bunch of different brands before this, and they just didn't have the control, the, the uh, the precision like they just it's so smooth a lot of them will kick and jitter and stuff like that plus it has a sweet vacuum attachment so i'm not gonna die early from lung failure anyway if you look at this i'm serious this is baby's bottom smooth right now don't get me wrong it's not ready for like professional painting yet but where we need it to be it's there and it got there a lot faster than having to use block sanding so this is about a 150 grit sandpaper i put it on here fire up the shop vac get this puppy going it'll smooth out and i'm not gonna do it right now because you can already see this is kind of the before and then this is the after of of how it's gonna look and it came out really really smooth and then um i will actually use the hand block and i'll just round off the edges here because uh using the power tools for that they're a little bit too fast even when i put it at its lowest speed it's gonna be a little fast after that we're gonna prime it um, it's okay to prime it when it's this smooth. You wouldn't want to paint it. So we're going to prime it. Then from the primer, I'll take that and I'll hit it with a smaller grit, like a 600 grit, that kind of thing. And then we'll get into the painting. Okay, gang, the good stuff is here now. It's time to do a little priming. I'm going to do a little bit of an experiment here. I'm using what's uh, called filler primer by Rust-Oleum. It's supposed to fill out imperfections. So normally I like to sand things down to about three to 400 grit. Uh, and then put on the primer. This time I only went as far as, well, I went 120 and then I had a worn out 80. So I don't know, <laughs> somewhere around 200-ish, something like that. Anyway, after I was done, um, as per the directions, I hit it with some water and I've had it in the sun here drying. Now on the instructions here, it says it's um, obviously got to shake the life out of it. So I'm just giving it some spins, turn it upside down, give it some spins and a whole bunch of shakes as well. I've already done that behind camera. But, uh, Normally it takes about 20 minutes to recoat. With this one it says you can do it dry to the touch in as few as 10. And if you want to do multiple coats, all you have to do is just wait a few minutes, then you can recoat. So we're going to do just that. My goal is three coats. Um, I'm not even going to do any work on this until I have a minimum of three coats. I want to build up a nice thick coat. And then once we have that built up, then uh, we'll sand it again to prep it for paint. But you can see, I'm hoping you can see, Right there is an example of a tiny little imperfection. We'll see if this thing will fill. To spray it, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start on the end and I'm gonna go all the way across, nice and slow. Very light coat, this first one. It's gonna leave a whole bunch of imperfections. That's fine. Get a few minutes to dry and then the next time I come across, I'm gonna go the opposite direction. You can kind of see in the reflection there. It looks like there's a line right there. If you now go the opposite way, uh, and then eventually you go diagonal, that'll make sure that there is absolutely zero patterns in your finish. Okay, so I'm gonna keep on doing that, and after three coats, I'll show you what we got. They say that it's ready to be sanded within a couple hours, uh, two to four. It's been two hours in the sun, so I can tell it's it's good to go. And I gotta say, this stuff came out awesome. Um, it pretty much filled in all the imperfections, and I could see them all as I was building up the layers. The only thing that it couldn't fill, um, I'm hoping you can see it right there, is some teeny tiny little air holes that came from the filler. So for that, what we're gonna do is do some spot putty filling. Spot putty is basically a fancy way of saying uh, filler with a lot of hardener in it. So you can also get some glazing putty, I believe it's called, uh, well, glazing putty, <laughs> um, that uh, is basically the same thing as what we're doing here. Mix it up to where it becomes really, really blue. I can just take it and any low points that I have, I can put it in here and just kind of move it along to fill it in. Now, 
I'm using the scraper, but as you can see, on spots like this, they're usually teeny tiny spots, and they don't need a big scraper. I'm even using my smallest scraper. So there it worked pretty good, because I could just blend it out. But in some cases, where it's not going to work, because like the idea is you should just basically put it on, and then you don't really have to like sand it or work it. Like this mess here, this is stupid. So you drag it across like that, and if it doesn't come out smooth, I'm not really satisfied with that. What you can just do is take your finger on it like this, smooth it out that way. And that should give you the result you're looking for. Um, it didn't quite come out the way I wanted, so I'll use my thumb now. Let's see if I can do it this way. So I'm going to keep on doing this on the little spots that we have here. And after that, we're ready to sand and paint. So we had a little problem with the clear coat. We're not going to talk about that because it's just going to make me mad. It's going to make me mad. All you need to know is, well, just to pr pretend that uh, we've got it primed and block sanded and we're going to do our painting with the Rust-Oleum Auto Enamel. We're going to go zigzags back and forth each coat. It takes two hours between coats. So first coat, give it a little prep spray. Um, it's going to just be back and forth this way. I'm going to put it on fairly, well, you shouldn't put it on thick. I'm doing it just because of the fact that I already have a base on here, but we're not talking about that. And because of the fact that I have it mounted um, horizontally, it'll be okay. Uh, don't worry of the fact that it looks horrible. You can see the, the reflection on the light. It's just because it's the first coat. It's just a base coat. If you get any little blips or chunks of dust or whatever in there let it slide don't worry about it we'll deal with that on the clear coat side when it comes time to wet sand it first coat dried real good but i didn't like the the, the fact that some dust settled on horizontally so i moved it vertical and now we will go the other direction for the second coat and a little bit thicker but we're gonna we're not just gonna go thick on one coat we're gonna do it and then come back so it'll give the first one a little bit of time to flash so here we go Yeah, that filled in a lot of mess. Okay. So uh, this time I'm just going to go back and forth. This one's going to be a lot lighter, a lot quicker, as you can see. Just going for a build. I don't want runs. And just a little bit on some other spots here. Nothing crazy. So I didn't want to talk about this because it's just going to get me mad. Um, but you can already see right here, that's what was happening um, previously, which is why I had basically had to redo this thing twice, these little cracks. Um, it usually means that the paint hasn't had time to dry, but I mean, I don't really know what else I can do here. So I'm going to hit it with paint one more time. I hope those cracks are from something else. Um, and then I'll bring it inside the house to dry or something like that. So this time, I believe I'm going to go up and down. So just putting it on, I'm going to let it flash real quick, see what happens. Looks pretty good. And it will flash just that quick. Uh, like if I touched it right now, it'd already be, it wouldn't be like, like sticky, but it would be, uh, it wouldn't, certainly wouldn't be runny. So it's flashed. Okay, and I'll go a little bit more. Okay, that should be enough of a coat. Well, for about the third time, we have a perfect coat of paint going on. And for about the third time, I'm going to try a clear coat. The difference this time is I'm putting it right on before the paint has had a chance to cure. Um, in case you can't tell, what I'm about to say, put on a safety mask. Put on a mask. This clear coat stuff is potent, crazy potent. We're only going to need one coat. It's very thin, but it really creates a huge haze of mist. I'll show you when I'm all done. We're going to put it on uh, pretty heavy and pretty even. Here we go.
seems to be taking to it quite well. Nothing goofy happening. I'm going to go over here. This is where we had some other crazy nonsense action happen previously. If it was going to start doing that cracking garbage, uh, it would probably do it right around now. Nothing there. And nothing there. Looks like we are clear to continue. Put it on one way, now put it on the other way. Now put it on flat. I think we have got it. We're going to give that a full 24 hours and we'll let it uh, get nice and hard. We let it sit and look at that shine. Hello. <laughs> Normally for a body panel like this, um, I wouldn't do what I'm about to do. But just to show you guys how it's all done, um, I'm going to work on wet sanding it with 1500 and then buffing it to a nice shine. Get some water, put it on. That, oh, it's already rolling off because it's so smooth. Okay, yeah, got a pile going. Then put the sander on top, then set it to a low speed, turn it on, and then just go in a nice, consistent motion. Don't move fast, just go nice and consistent. And keep doing that, then we'll do buffing. Wiped down, dried off, you see it's almost gone. All right, time for 3,000. So 3,000 grit uh, sanding disc. I call it a disc because it's, it's not sandpaper. It's almost like a chunk of foam. That's what it looks like. Uh, this is just about as close as you can get to um, polishing using a sander. And uh, same process is going to apply. We're going to put the water on. It's going to run all the way down, so we'll catch it really quick. And then same thing, low speed, working back and forth. This will really give a nice uh, buffing effect. When we dry this out, it'll be very, very smooth. Um, it'll still look cloudy, of course, but uh, it'll make it super, super smooth and ready for rubbing compound. 3000 grit all done. Got a nice haze going on there. That's exactly what we want. The discoloration doesn't matter, the smoothness does. The worst we have is a little bit of orange peel, that's what they call it, looks like the peel of an orange. Um, inconsistencies, high points there. Um, if this was a body panel, I would not accept that. I would probably sand it a little bit more with a 1500 grit and then bring it back again with a 3000. But because this is just an engine part, we're not going to worry about it. This is good. Okay, compound time. Next thing we're going to do is use Meguiar's Ultimate Compound. There's all different brands, it doesn't matter. Compound. After that, go to polishing compound that's much more mild it's not as aggressive this is like liquid sandpaper so it will cause some damage if you don't know what you're doing we shake it like crazy open it up and put it on to the applicator pad like that put about the size of a quarter on there put it on the lowest speed setting take the compound mush it around a little bit and I'm going to do this with one hand so it's kind of tricky, but just go nice and smooth, back and forth, just like we were doing with the sander. Keep doing it until the compound doesn't remain. If it doesn't come to a shine, well then I guess you shouldn't have bought such a cheap piece of junk buffer. Anyway, just take a microfiber cloth and rub, rub, rub. Until it comes out. This stuff here is just junk, so we can rub it off too. Some more junk. Rub it off carefully. And then, yeah, that's insane. You can already tell where we're going with this. See, I've done the far one there. Um, this is getting bonkers. We're talking auto body grade stuff here, people. Uh, it's going to be pretty wild. So I'm going to keep doing that. And then after that, it's going to be polishing compound like we even need it at this point. But we'll just, we'll just make this thing over the top awesome. This thing looks like glass, and if you can believe it, it gets even better. You can see now, I'm just going to film the rest of this in the reflection because there's no point in looking at me. Next thing is polishing compound. You're going to apply it the exact same way, and it's just going to bring out an even deeper shine. 
You know the drill. This is crazy. I'm just going to pick my teeth. I finish showing if you don't mind. It came out that good.